What's happening guys? So, okay, I've got a GoPro and I've got the phone and today I want to do a little bit of a test. So see, the phone's been working out good and I've been using the phone to not only shoot but also edit every single one of my videos except for the very latest one that I did, uh, which was at John's Mountain. That one I shot entirely on the phone, but I edited it on the computer. And it was a whole lot easier to edit on the computer, so I liked it. Well, then I got to thinking about it after I realized that I cracked the camera lens on the S8 Active. Why not upgrade to a new GoPro 7? So I've got the GoPro 7, and I've got the S8 Active. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them both head to head. I've got the kayak loaded up here. I want to go down to Lake Murray, put the boat in the water, and I want to do a little bit of uh, vlogging with the Hero 7 and with the S8. Let's see how it works out. First and foremost, I must say that the GoPro 7 is far easier to set up and take the shot. And the reason is, is because with the phone, I have to set up the tripod, which is kind of an ordeal because it's a bigger tripod. Also, I have to get it just right, because, which is also kind of an ordeal because it's bigger. Um, and then I have to bring up the camera function on the GoPro. I can just simply hit and hold the button. So, um, so far, so good uh, for the GoPro 7. One plus that the Samsung has got for it is the fact that it's extremely easy to edit all the videos. You see, whenever I put the GoPro files onto my computer, I'm having a hard time editing the videos. I don't know, it's something to do with the format and maybe my computer's not up to snuff, but keep in mind, I've been doing everything off of just the phone and I've really liked the convenience of being able to do that. So that's a notch in the belt of the Samsung world to me. Other cool plus for the GoPro? I can mount it all over the place with all the cool accessories that it has. You can't really beat that, right? What's up guys? What's up guys? <laughs> Another notch in the GoPro? Time lapse. Time warp. Whatever. So, it is a pretty cool feature, and it is cool to watch as a transitional style feature. So, that's what this looks like. Range of view is much better with the GoPro as well. Versus the camera is more of a linear, or the uh, phone's more of a linear. So it doesn't get the wide angle. Matter of fact, it doesn't get much as far as the distance goes at all. Tricky as hell, it don't work. So, too bad for that. Uh, second of all, <clears throat> the lake is down a lot low, a lot lower than I thought it was, so I didn't get to use the, uh, the little ramp in which usually I get to use. That is actually, turn it on. So that is actually the uh, ramp that I normally use right over there, and as you can see, it's sitting probably about four foot out of the water, and the reason is is because uh, they've let the lake down. Let's take a look. That's it. Like I said, normally, that's where I put in at. Normally, I just put the uh, the kayak right there on that bottom piece, and that bottom piece is underwater. As you can see, it's about four foot up. 
so I had to actually use that today. Not too bad. It's a pretty day, but it's definitely not bright and sunshiny, so it's really going to be a telltale sign of the uh, video quality that we're going to see on both of these devices. Yeah, the nimbleness and the ability to just grab and go with the GoPro is really nice. But, you know, I've always got the phone with me. There's never a time that I don't have my phone with me. And I've been recording, I've been talking, I've been doing Pandora, all that good stuff, and I still have 72%. It's only 11.48 in the morning. The GoPro is already down to 50%, and we just got to the lake. One of the downfalls to the phone, though, is the fact that whenever you dip it down into the water, it is waterproof or water resistant or whatever you want to call it, but whenever you dip it down into the water, the microphone doesn't work. Let's see how the uh, GoPro handles this. Let's go swimming. Let's see how the microphone works now, after it's been swimming. All right, so here we are, and the GoPro is at 30-something percent battery. The phone is at 67 percent battery. And granted, I've been using the GoPro a good bit more than the uh, phone, but uh, I've used the phone for every single vlog and uh, never had this issue as far as with the battery goes. So the 30 percent on the GoPro is concerning. So really no issues per se. Um, you know, the GoPro... Image wise, I think that they're comparable, especially if you know how to use the um, settings on the phone. Stabilization, the GoPro wins most definitely. Um, I do have a gimbal and the stabilization hasn't been a real, real, real bad concern um, as of yet on the channel, I don't think. Audio quality, the GoPro has improved 100% over the previous models. The audio quality is by far, without a doubt, better than it was before. That being said, it's still not the equivalent of having something like a Rode mic or something like that. Again, I've seen some really cool vlog setups for the phone. Where the GoPro is um, earning all of its negative remarks right now, in my opinion, is the ability to download um, the video onto a pretty standard PC without, you know, having to make major upgrades. The phone, I can edit all the videos in Shotcut. Uh, the GoPro, I've not been able to get Shotcut to edit the videos properly, mainly because um, I think there's something to do with the extension of HEVC files or whatever. Um, you can turn this off in the GoPro by uh, decreasing the image quality, but I don't think that anybody wants to do that. Uh, my phone, I can record in 4K and in edit everything and everything's good to go. Um, also, as far as just pointing and shooting, I think they're both equivalent as far as that goes. Um, overall, I do like the compact design of the GoPro and all the cool features that you can get on the GoPro. Um, but I also like the ability to continue using the phone. So as of right now, I think that I'm still going to continue to use the phone. Yeah. Unless I edit this thing and for some reason I change my mind. Let's get out of here. Yeah, there's a storm coming. Check it out. Figured I'd get going a little bit, see if I can't get this thing to shake around. So what do you guys think after watching everything, watching the, you know, the water, between the shakiness, between the clarity, between everything about this versus the GoPro, what do you guys think? What's your, what, what, what's your opinion? Let me know. All right, so that is it. That is the initial review of the GoPro Hero 7 uh, for, for me. You know, uh, my main goal is I'm trying to find out if I can use the GoPro in order to replace the uh, 
Samsung S8 Active as my primary vlogging tool. I've done everything up to this point solely on the Samsung. I'm going to try this out a little bit more. You know, I've got the fair coming up. Also, uh, there's a little event, uh, Rooftop Roundup in uh, the Blue Ridge Mountains that I'm going to go try out. So I'll shoot a couple more little vlogs with the GoPro before I make my final decision. Ultimately, Best Buy does give you a 15-day return policy. So if I don't like it, then I'll put it back. What I will tell you, though, for $400, that is awfully steep. Um, I do like the idea that it is super stable. That's nice. I don't have to worry about bringing out the gimbal and all that good stuff. Um, I don't necessarily like the idea of the fact that um, the microphone's not that great. And I also don't necessarily like the idea of you can set the color preferences on the GoPro to be a little bit less saturated. Uh, however, is uh, whenever you do that, it's completely flat. Whenever you make them completely flat, then they really don't have a whole lot of color at all to them. So that's why you see that it is a little bit different here. What I will say is that the color settings on the phone have not changed. These are standard color settings that it comes with. Whereas on the GoPro, these are the GoPro color settings. The GoPro color settings, from what I understand, if you put them on flat, then you get a little bit better data as far as the color goes. But you do have to go back in, post edit, and fix them. As far as with the phone, I can edit everything straight from the phone and upload it straight to YouTube. I've been doing that since 2015 when I started my channel. Um, with the GoPro, you do have to load it in on the computer and change it around and then uh, edit it. You know, I guess you could do that on the phone. I would have to transfer the files from there to the phone um, and then do it in PowerDirector, which is what I've been using thus far. Uh, with the phone, too, um, you can also go in and play with the colors. Uh, also, the phone does not have as wide of an angle as the GoPro, which I like the idea of the wide angle on the GoPro, but then there's also sometimes where I see that it kind of looks like it's distorted a bit. And also for those close-up shots, if you look at uh, the shots of the horses, for example, you'll see that it's a little bit kind of odd. Also, uh, if you look at the shot of those towers whenever I was on Lake Murray, um, or excuse me, the the platform whenever I was on Lake Murray showing you where the water was gone down. That all being said, again, I'm going to continue using the GoPro 7 for just a little while. I've got 15 days to try it out. I'm going to shoot a couple more videos of it. Um, tell me what you guys think. Uh, you know, honestly, I, I feel like that the phone works just fine. Um, and the GoPro is just one more thing to carry, one more set of software to do. Oh, that's the other thing. The software on my computer, which I haven't been using a computer at all, um, so I, I don't really have an upgraded computer. It's just an old work computer that we have here at the house. That has to be upgraded in order to use um, Shotcut uh, with the GoPro. I can use Premiere Pro, but Premiere Pro costs $20 a month, and I don't know that I really want to pay for it. So not only does the cost of the GoPro $400 add to it, but also I have to pay $20 extra dollars a month to be able to edit the GoPro footage, and I just don't know that it's worth it to me. Uh, for for what I do. Um, I'm not bombing down hills on mountain bikes or on snowboards or stuff like that so the need for an action camera isn't necessarily there but I do like uh, the b-roll capabilities of the GoPro as well as uh, the, the compactness of the GoPro and being able to just set it up and, and record so uh, it's definitely got its uh, it, it's definitely got its advantages and it's definitely got plenty of disadvantages too uh, my point is, is the $400 is just slightly over what I have it valued at. Also keep in mind, whenever I did the editing inside of Adobe Pro, I did not change any of the settings. So I have not altered any of the footage in any way, shape, or form. The only thing that I had to do is because of the wide frame, I suppose, on the GoPro, I did have to change the scale of the cell phone uh, video uh, so it, it fit to scale to fit or whatever Adobe makes you do. But I did do that in order to uh, maintain the same size video. I don't know if that distorted any of the footage. It's still editing now. So we'll see. So stay tuned for more videos with the GoPro 7. I'm gonna, Again, I'm going to put it through its paces and try it out on various different uh, vlogs and various different shooting uh, methods. So till next time, I appreciate you watching. Peace!